Hi again everybody. This is our fourth video on numerical integration. In this video we're going to learn something called Simpson's Rule, which is going to come down to essentially using parabolas instead of linear functions to approximate our curves. All right, so let's see what this is all about. So there's going to be a small modification from the previous rules that we've learned. Here you'll notice instead of stopping at x3, I've gone all the way up to x4, and this is not an accident. Whenever you use Simpson's rule, we are going to insist that the number of partitions is an even number. Okay, so number of partitions is even. And if you always get into the habit of labeling your first x-coordinate with x sub 0, then when you're using Simpson's rule, you know that this number on the end, right, x sub whatever this n is, that needs to be an even number, all right? Because this tells you how many partitions you have. All right, we'll see quickly why it is that you need an even number to employ this. So the idea is going to be this. We're going to look at not two at a time, but three at a time. Because if you want to define a parabola, you don't just need two points, you need three points. So I'm going to sample my function at x0, x1, and at x2. Alright, so there's my sample at x0. So that's my y0. I sample it here at x1 and get my y1, and I'll sample it here at x2, and I'll get a y2. Okay, so I get these three points. And it's an old theorem from geometry that three non-collinear points are going to define a parabola. So there is a way to do this, and I'm not going to go through the, uh, the derivation of it, but there is a way to figure out what if I draw a parabola through those three points, it should reasonably approximate that curve, and I want to know what that area is, and it's actually a very easy formula. So let's write it down here as the area between x0 and x2. Okay, so I just want this area right here. I'm not worried about the area on the other side. So I'm just looking at that area there. So it turns out that we can get this area or at least an approximation by looking at our delta x, which it, this is actually the same as before. So there's our delta x, same thing from x1 to x2. There's our delta x. And you, know, you may remember in the uh, special trapezoidal rule, we ended up dividing by 2. Turns out now we're going to divide by 3. Why? Well, it has something to do with the fact that when you take an antiderivative of a quadratic, you get that cubic, but you divide it by 3. OK, so I have delta x divided by 3. And then, what am I going to do? I'm going to take my y0. I'm going to add to it four copies of y1. Okay, that's the magic. That's where the derivation would tell you where that four comes from. And I'm going to then add one copy of y2. And that's it. That's all I have to do. Now, that only gave me the first side Right? I still want to do it for the second side. Now, when we do it for the second side, everything works exactly the same. We can write this down. Area between x2 and x4. Okay, well that'll approximately be delta x plus 3. And now the first one is an x2, so we have a y2, 4 y3s, and a y4. Now, when I put these together, the delta x over 3 is in both of them, right? So I wanna, why do I want to add these together, by the way? Right? Well, because I want to get this area plus this area. Okay, fine. So I add these. When I add these together, the delta x over 3 is going to pull out. No problem there. So delta x over 3. Now the y naught, that just occurs in the one time. The 4y1 is there. But there's this y2. This y2 occurs both as the right endpoint of this partition and as the left endpoint of this partition. It's going to occur twice. So I get to put a 2y2 in here. Okay, and now I fill out the rest, which only occur once. A 4y3, 
and a y4. Now, here's the important thing. As you go further, you may use more partitions. How is that going to affect your formula? Well, the only places where it really matters that you have one, two, three, four, five, whatever of these parabolas is on the endpoints. Those always get shared. And so you're always going to share those endpoints well, exactly twice. And you're going to get this alternating pattern. Right? If we went to a third set of para uh, third parabola, right, this y4 would get used again. It would get used in the next parabola, and so it would get a 2 coefficient. So it's always going to look like 1's on the end, and then 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, ending with a 4. Okay, so that's how we can generalize this to, to larger n, although we always want the number of partitions to be even. And why was it that we always wanted them to be even? Well, each parabola uses these three points, but two partitions. So no matter how many parabolas you use, you always need an even number of partitions, two times the number of parabolas you use. Okay. All right, so let's clean this up. We'll come back. We're going to do that example from the last video again using Simpson's rule and make a really remarkable discovery. Okay, so you may recall we are dealing in the last video with the function negative x squared plus 4. We already know how to use a definite integral to actually compute that directly. We ended up saying, okay, if I wanted to know the area uh, between 1 and 2, well, we said that if you integrate from 1 to 2, negative x squared plus 4 dx, you end up with 1.6 repeated. So we saw that if we used the midpoint rule, we were able to get pretty close to that, maybe off by about two hundredths or so. Let's see what happens when we use Simpson's rule. Now, it wouldn't be fair to use Simpson's rule with more partitions than I used for the midpoint rule or the trapezoidal rule or in any of the other rules. So I'm going to try to be fair here and only use these two different uh, partition intervals. Okay, so I'm going to break it up at 1.5 here. So I have this interval and this interval. I'm just going to use one parabola, right? Just one parabola. And let's see how close we can get with our approximation. So the Simpson's rule for just one parabola is very, very easy. The area should be approximately, okay, I need my delta x, all right? So when, let's write the formula down, delta x over 3, and then we need our y0, right? Well, what's a y0? It's f of 1 plus 4 times f of this term, 1.5, plus f of 2. Okay. So we just need to know these values. Okay, well, we actually computed these in previous video. Uh, but let's see again, the delta x, well, that's just this distance. That's 0 0.5, so 0 0.5 over 3. And then we need f of 1. Okay, this was computed before, it's 3. We need 4 times uh, f of 1.5, which was 1.75. And then we need f of 2. Well, that's the easy one, that's 0. Okay, and this is not a terribly difficult uh, arithmetic problem, and it ends up equaling 1.6 repeated. It's not just an approximation. It's the exact answer. Those are the same thing. That's really peculiar. <laughs> so it's amazing, but it turns out, and we'll see why in the next video, it turns out that Simpson's rule will always be correct if the degree of the polynomial is small enough. Yeah? So in this case, the degree is 2. That's the highest ordered power of x. That's really kind of neat. So we're going to see, actually, even if you had a third degree polynomial, Simpson's rule is going to be exact right, in its answer. You don't even have to compute an integral. Not that it was so hard to do. Okay, so, but we'll get into that in the next video. But this is kind of neat that we can use Simpson's rule to actually compute exact values instead of just approximate values. In general, we're going to be using a lot more than just two intervals. In general, we're not going to be using this to compute the, anti or the integral uh, for a function which is just a polynomial. We're going to want to use it for more interesting situations. 
but in practice this is going to be one of the better techniques in the numerics toolbox for actually computing these definite integrals. We'll see in the next video just how good it is.